Over the next few videos, I'm going to be talking about the idea of shapes of molecules. And what I mean by this is if you consider a central atom of a inside a molecule or any a, a particular atom in the molecule, like say this atom, and then you consider the um the different bonds or, or the, the different bonds in, involved in that atom so maybe it has a bond here and a bond here and a bond here or something what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be exploring the idea of predicting the angles between these bonds so maybe this angle or this angle or this angle anyway so to begin with shapes of molecules are more or less affected by uh two main things now the first main thing is the number of bonded pairs so bonded pairs is a pair of electron a pair of electrons which are in a bond so uh, bonded bonded pairs now if you were to consider maybe a, a water molecule for example so you've got the oxygen and you've got the hydrogen well, the hydrogens would be slightly smaller but you've got the hydrogens here and then you'd have um, electrons which are bonded so yeah you'd have bonding electrons these are the lone pairs but yeah I've just draw them on there anyway so you'd have uh, bonded pairs of electrons these two would be bonded pairs and these two would be bonded pairs and these bonded pairs of electrons you see are gonna affect the uh, the bond angles involved the bond angles in this uh, molecule another thing which affects the number of the, the shape of molecules is the number of the number of lone pairs so the number of lone pairs of electrons and all a lone pair is is a pair of electrons which is not bonded to anything else so these these two electrons here are not bonded to anything else so they're just two pairs they're just a pair of electrons and this is a pair of electrons and the number of these are going to affect the shape of the molecule so the number of bonded bonding pairs well not bonded pairs the things that are bonded are the uh, are the atoms obviously but what the bonding 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 pairs I think that describes it better the number of bonding pairs and the number of lone pairs in this uh, molecule would affect the, the bond angle and the, th and the idea the name for this kind of um, this theory or this idea of trying to predict this stuff it has a quite a long name and the name is valence shell electron pair repulsion theory valence shell electron pair repulsion theory and sometimes it's shortened to um, V well I just wrote, said V and it wrote S. It's sometimes it's shortened to V S E P well sorry I was looking at the R when I wrote it so instead of writing a P I wrote an R V S P R so V V-S-E-P-R and then they would just write theory so sometimes it's shortened to this just because this is so long and the idea behind this the, the ideas which this theory involves is the idea that first of all lone pairs are going to repel each other as much as possible so lone pairs repel as much as possible and um, the second idea is that uh, let me just uh, where should I write this let me go down here then so the first one was that I'll drag this down here actually so I've got I've actually got like a list of this these ideas so lone pairs lone pairs repel each repel as much as possible 
Specifically, they repel each other as much as possible. And the second idea involved in valence shell electron pair repulsion theory is that um, bonded pairs repel each other less than um, less less than lone pairs. Well, not less than lone pairs, but less strongly than lone pairs. And the reason for this is to do with the, uh, the fact that um, lone pairs are closer to the nucleus of the atom than um, bonded pairs. So bonded pairs are uh, uh, slightly a distance further away from the, the, the nucleus than they are. Um, So bonded pairs repel each other less strongly than lone pairs. And the third thing is that because of this, if we imagine two angles, imagine if we just had a lone pair and a bonded pair, the idea behind that would be that lone pairs lone pairs um repel bonded pairs. Um, more strongly than bonded pairs, repel bonded pairs. So if we were to put this in the form of like a, a greater than, using the greater than sign, we would have that um, the greatest force of repulsion would be between lone pairs and lone pairs. So the greatest would be lone pair, lone pair repulsion. And then the next greatest after that would be, um, well, I don't have that much space. Oh, right, let me move this to the other side. Hmm. Okay, so lone pairs repel repel lone pairs, um, the greater than any other sort of repulsion, and then after that is lone pair bonded pair repulsion. So lone pair bonded pair repulsion. And then after that, so lone pair bonded pair repulsion is greater than bonded pair bonded pair repulsion. So bonded bonded pair bonded pair repulsion. So as you can see, we first have lone pair, lone pair, then lone pair, bonded pair, and then bonded pair, bonded pair. So if we go back up to H2O, where is it? Oh, there it is. If we go back to H2O, what would be the case here? And I know this isn't exactly, this isn't to scale, but what we would have is that the greatest angle would be um, this angle. The, I know it's not to scale, it looks like the other ones are bigger, but what would happen is that this angle would be the greatest angle in the in a molecule in terms of the, the angle between these two lone pairs. And the second greatest angle would be the angle between the two, between the lo lone pair and the bonded pairs, so these two. And then the third greatest angle would be between the... Um, the two bonded pairs. So this would be the smallest angle. So most repulsion. Whoa, what? Sorry, my tablet was acting a bit strange just now. Most repulsion. And then this would have the um, middle, what would I call this? Um, mid repulsion.
and then now this would be least repulsion because what happens is the the great repulsion between this it pushes these two um pairs closer together and makes this um makes this uh angle smaller so yeah i will be talking in the next few videos about how we would work out the shape of a molecule based on the number of bond bonded pairs and uh lone pairs so i hope you guys learned something from this video and um yeah i'll see you in the next video